the other day we were discussing how the observer when looking at the observed just interprets it and does not look at the reality outside at all <clears throat> there is a brief moment when the mind does look at an outside object when there is a pure observation <coughs> where there is no identification and no recognition but the human mind is so strongly conditioned to judge to evaluate and come to conclusions that the period of pure observation is very very limited it's almost non existent we almost immediately come to a conclusion and conclusion is according to our past experiences recognition is according to our past memories and experiences so in that act of recognition there is hardly any observation it's mostly interpretation therefore the conditioned mind is a mind of conclusions it it has conclusions it starts with those conclusions and with those conclusions <coughs> it looks and it ends with conclusions so in other words the conditioned mind is living in conclusions it is no observation almost you could say that each one of us in the conditioned state we are living in our own four walls in our own conclusions we do not know what's happening around us we do not know what reality is around us and so with those conclusions the reality that we are making because each one of us is making a reality through our thought through our actions based on that thought that reality is a projection of self perpetuation totally conditioned and since we are living in our own conclusions in our own shells so to say there is no relationship with anything outside there is only separation there is only conflict and so there is a constant battle going on with the outside environment a constant battle going on with people around us and inwardly also the observer is not some fixed entity is not some homogeneous harmonious blending of memories and experiences inwardly also the observer is a mixture of is a compound of all the past experiences good and bad pleasant and unpleasant and so the pleasant and the unpleasant experiences are already in conflict inside you want something and you don't want something you want one thing and at the same time you are afraid of having it because of the sad experience 
because of the unpleasant memories. So, the observer is not only in conflict with the outside world, it's also in conflict with its own self, within itself. So you could almost see that in a conditioned state, the world that we have created is a world of violence, a world of conflict. And if that has to end, and that must end, why? Because each one of us, whether we live in our conclusions, whether we live in our dogmas or creeds, in whatever state we live in, deep down somewhere, we all want peace. We all want security. We all want happiness. <clears throat> so, for life to survive, for the human race to survive, peace and security is essential. Peace and security is inherent in every cell of the body. In every cell of the brain tissue. Peace and security is inherent. It's there as the basis of the cellular structure. Because without that security, Without that peace, body cannot function. The brain cells cannot function. And so now you can see that this observer is something which has alienated itself not only from the observed, but even from the brain cells even from the body cells. So you could almost see how the observer in its process of isolation and consolidation is separating itself from the cellular structure, from the body cells, from the brain cells, from the outside world and is forming a center, an entity which is a complex structure of mixed memories and experiences, conflicting experiences. And in that state it is destroying the basis of security for the body cells and the brain cells. It prepares for war. It prepares for conflict. So obviously, the whole of the living processes in the body, in every organism, in the whole of life around, is looking for a change, is looking for a world where there is peace and harmony, where there is no war, where there is love and affection and relationship. And so a change must take place. How could this change be brought about? We were discussing last time <clears throat> that it cannot be brought about by an act of will.
it cannot be brought about by wishful thinking by chanting certain mantras some form of transcendental meditation or some such thing it cannot be brought about though some people claim that it can be but open to a big question whether objectively such a situation can be brought about modifications will take place through these mantras through this chanting through the system some modification will take place relative peace and relative harmony can be created but what is relatively true is also relatively false what is relatively loving is also relatively violent so love and peace cannot be relative love peace security have to be absolute because relative peace and security cover up camouflage <coughs> violence and therefore all social reforms all reformist movements come to a sad end So how can we proceed with this change? If the mind has gone that far and it sees that any voluntary effort any voluntary decision making is not going to bring about this change any technique or system is not going to bring about the change what will that's the beginning of inquiry so the first change needed is from a mind which is volitional which is active which is the doer that mind must change into an inquiring mind a mind which is living with conclusions is made up of conclusions must give up its conclusions but that's obvious because unless you give up those conclusions there is no possibility of learning if you want to learn anything new the old must be forgotten the old must be set aside <coughs> you cannot learn with while you are still holding to your conclusions with the other hand so the mind must turn from an instrument of decision making <coughs> from an instrument instrument of conclusion making into a mind of inquiry and in order to inquire you have to look so the mind has to be an inquiring mind and a perceptive mind 